Start off by soaking the EXP disc in oil for at least 5 minutes. Laying the bike on its side makes the clutch installation much easier and eliminates the need to drain the oil. Remove the return spring if it is attached to the clutch cover. Push the rear caliper in and depress the rear brake pedal. Insert a screwdriver as a stop. Remove the clutch cover. Remove the spring pressure ring. The spring pressure ring has three possible settings. It will be marked with either a 1, 2, 3, or an X, Y, Z. Remove the bolts and the Belleville spring. Then remove the slider ring from the pressure plate. Remove the OEM pressure plate and ensure that the OEM throwout remains in place. Remove the entire clutch pack taking special care to prevent the drive pins from falling into the motor. Using picks will make this much easier. Again, make sure that the six drive pins remain in place. You can see here how easy they can come out. The 6100 series EXP replaces the OEM drive plates with recluse drive plates, which have slots. Separate the OEM drive plates from the OEM frictions. Begin reinstalling the clutch pack with the recluse steel drive plate, followed by an OEM friction disc. Continue this alternating pattern until the pack has seven recluse drive plates and six OEM frictions. We are now ready to install the EXP assembly into the clutch pack. Ensure that this goes in on top of the recluse drive plate. It is normal to have the EXP sitting part way above the basket. Now we can install the recluse pressure plate and lining plate. Index the rectangle tabs into the corresponding pressure plate slots. Hold the lining plate and pressure plate together as you place it back on top of the clutch pack assembly. Install the pressure plate ring spacer with engraved part number facing upward. Reinstall the OEM slider ring with rounded edge facing up. There is also a marking that reads top on it which should be facing up. Reinstall the OEM Belleville spring cupped side down. Reinstall the OEM spring pressure ring with the same setting it had when it was removed. You may also refer to the recluse tuning chart supplied in your kit or online. Secure the pressure plate assembly using recluse supplied screws. Do not use OEM or damage will occur. Use the included T25 Torx bit to torque the screws to 60 to 70 inch pounds. Here you can reinstall the OEM clutch cover with OEM gasket. If you use a recluse clutch cover you will not need to use a thicker gasket. Do note that if you use a recluse clutch cover you will need to use the OEM oil fill plug. Reattach the brake pedal return spring. Pump the rear brake pedal several times to clamp the rear brake pads back to the rotor. Stand the bike back up and place it on the bike stand. Now we will be replacing the OEM slave cylinder and making our install gap adjustment. Unscrew the bolt holding the chain guide in place. Remove dust cap from banjo bleeder bolt. Gloves are recommended for this part of the install, as well as safety glasses. Remove the banjo bleeder bolt. Remove the two OEM crush washers and discard. Remove the remaining slave cylinder bolts. Ensure that the OEM gasket remains in place. Remove the OEM case o-ring from the OEM slave cylinder. This will be reinstalled with the Recluse Adjustable Slave Cylinder. Now we must prepare the Recluse Adjustable Slave Cylinder for bleeding. Use a 4mm Allen wrench to make the top o-ring visible on the adjuster screw. Pour clutch fluid into the slave cylinder port. Note that you need to use proper clutch fluid based on the specific model bike you have. Check the cap of the clutch master cylinder to determine the correct type. Turn the adjuster screw clockwise until it bottoms out, ensuring that fluid stays topped off. Now turn the adjuster screw back to the initial position with the top o-ring visible. Compress the piston until it bottoms out, while looking for air bubbles. 
If air bubbles can be seen escaping, repeat the bleeding process. Reattach the banjo bowl using the two supplied crush washers from Recluse. Ensure that the banjo fitting is sandwiched between the crush washers, as shown. Reinstall the OEM case o-ring. You also need to make sure that the ball bearing has remained in place with the Recluse save cylinder. This is something that was installed by Recluse. Install the adjustable slave cylinder with the OEM bolts. Attach the rubber bleed tube to the bleeder fitting on the banjo bolt. Loop the overflow tube up and into a suitable catch bottle. Remove the cap and bladder from the OEM clutch master cylinder. Rotate the clutch perch so that the master cylinder reservoir is level with the ground. Top off the reservoir with proper clutch fluid. Pump the clutch lever three to five times and hold it in. While still holding the clutch lever in, use an 8mm wrench to open the bleed port. Air and fluid should come out of the bleed tube. Tighten the bleed port back down. Make sure that the clutch fluid has remained in the reservoir and repeat this process until no air comes out of the bleed tube. Ensure that the clutch lever feels and functions properly. We want the reservoir to be about 75% full, then we can reinstall the reservoir cap. Remove the overflow tube and bottle. Reattach the dust cap. At this point of the install, we are ready to set the install gap. Using a 4mm Allen wrench with the long end inserted, turn the adjuster screw until it stops under moderate pressure. You are trying to feel for the point at which the throwout will start to lift the pressure plate. This is known as a starting point. Once you have consistently found the starting point, turn the adjuster clockwise one full turn plus five tick marks. Let the bike warm up for about two to three minutes. Now we need to check for free play game. Wrap the supplied rubber band around the bars and lever as shown. With the bike in neutral and your hand off the clutch lever, rev the motor 20 times to at least 5,000 RPMs. Be sure to let the engine return to idle between revs. This procedure breaks in the EXP unit. Now while the engine is still running, pull in the clutch lever and click the transmission into first gear. Slowly release the lever. The bike should stay in place, maybe even with slight creeping. If stalling occurs, we need to make the install gap larger by turning the adjuster clockwise. Once the bike is idling in first gear, slowly roll on the throttle without touching the clutch lever. Accelerate to about 5,000 RPMs and come to a stop. Repeat this 20 times. Next, we will do the same thing, only now you should start off in second gear and repeat 10 times. With the bike warmed up and running in neutral, blip the throttle to at least 5,000 RPM. The lever should only move in about 1 8th of an inch. As you can see, we have way too much free play gain. To get your lever movement down to 1 8 of an inch, we need to simply turn the adjustment screw clockwise to further lift the pressure plate. This forms a larger install gap and therefore less free play gain. It's still a tad too much, so we need to continue tightening the adjustment screw. There we go, perfect. On the flip side, if you don't have any free play gain, you must turn your adjustment screw counterclockwise which lowers the install gap and increases your free play gain. And that concludes our install of the 6100 series EXP product for hydraulic clutch models. Recluse.